Well, hello and welcome to The Late Show. So good to have your company. And uh, I realize that if you're watching the live program, this is a time when some of you may be thinking of the, the cocoa, your slippers are on, and it's time for bed. Well, I hope you're not gonna go quite to bed yet because Tim Vince is here with me and Tim has got some scintillating truths to share with us and wonderful um, uh, biblical expositions to give us. And they are certainly going to go to, going to turn <laughs> up and say, oh, I'll watch the repeat. I don't think so, they're gonna stay with us. Uh, I hope you're gonna stay with us because we want to talk about a real hero of the faith mm. who um, just in the last 24 hours has gone to glory. Uh, we want to share a little bit about him. We want to talk about Tim's neighbor who's a medical doctor and who took on the GMC, took on the National Health Service and won his case when they challenged him about sharing his faith. And if we've got time, we want to look at what's happening in Iran from a different perspective to the way that, um, that uh, Simon and Reagan dealt with it. And we think it'll have some challenges for you, particularly as we look at what's happening to the church in Iran. So lots of things that we want to talk about, but of course, most of all, we want to hear from you. We have this wonderful iPad and all emails and texts come straight through to us here in the studio and we'll read and we'll share as many of them as we can. So are you ready, Tim? I'm ready. Good. You're not going to fall asleep on me, I, are you? Definitely not. Definitely not. Excellent. No, especially not talking about Brother Andrew. Okay. So, well, that's where we want to start because in the last 24 hours, yesterday in fact, um, a gentleman called Brother Andrew, to give him his real name, is Anne van der Beel. I hope that's the way you pronounce it. But uh, you and I uh, <laughs> most probably know him as Brother Andrew, or more affectionately, as God Smuggler. And born in 1928, which means that he uh, was 94, and yesterday he was promoted to glory. And we want to just talk about him because I think for so many of us, he really has been a hero of our faith. And I, I, I can remember certainly, Tim, and, and you've got the book there. I can see I it, thought, haven't you? I thought I, you would be talking about it, so I brought in. This is his famous book, God Smuggler. I, I was, ama goes. I was um, amazed today to, to, to see that 10 million copies of it have been sold. I mean, yeah. even for a, a secular Very book, impressive. that's uh, an amazing Very book. impressive and I, it, riveting read. So, so it's even now, it would be interesting. But when we grew up, Gordon, probably you and I, you know, as kids, this yeah. was one of the great books to read. But that, that's right. I mean, there was a whole series of books. And, and I'm sure some folks will write in and say, well, there's equally a series of books today. But, but um, God Smuggler, Brother, yeah. Brother Andrew, um, Dave Wilkinson, for crossing right, the switchblade, Nicky Cruz, Run Baby Run. Yeah. Um, and also The Hiding Place. The Hiding Place, Corrie Corrie Ten Boom. Boom. That's yeah. right, they yeah, were just amazing. some of the ones. W just wonder what your books were that you yeah. read as, uh, particularly if you were uh, growing up as a Christian uh, a number of years ago, or just recently. Tell us what you've been reading. We'd love to hear it, and you never know. If you say, suggest some books, it may help some other people. They'll say, well, I want to read that one too. Mm. So come on, Tim, if there are some people who are listening who are saying, not really sure that yeah. I know too much about Brother Andrew. How would you describe so, it? So uh, the first thing is a great story, you know, lives on, you know, plenty in the Bible. But uh, God, A God Smuggler is a book that even today folks would really enjoy reading. And he, you know, uh, um, Brother Andrew, he, I think he was born in 1926. Okay, I thought something it was 28, like but maybe 28. you're right. Okay, so that's, that's, so he had amazing experiences as a little naughty boy during the war, mm -hmm. but then he went on, I think he fought in Vietnam or in the Korean War, um, or in Indonesia, I think it was. And he, um, he had an epic life before he even came to know the Lord. Uh, yeah, he, he, it's very he was, moving. Story. He was born in Netherlands, in a place called St Pancras, mm. and he joined the colonial army of the Dutch East Indies. Right. And that's where he came yeah, to faith in Christ. Exactly. So, so he didn't. So he had some Christian upbringing, but he obviously he lived a pretty riotous, you know, as a young soldier. And then he was shot, I think, in his ankle, which uh, he then had to, you know, come home. You know, so he's released from from the army, and um, I think it is worth talking about how he came to the, know the Lord because he 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 just suddenly took an interest in. The reading of the scriptures and he attended all sorts of every church meeting he could attend and he was in I think a convalescent home and this amazingly good-looking um, 
uh, girl came in and invited everyone to the evening, uh, you know, mission uh, meeting. And uh, so he, he went along with friends, you know, to have a laugh, really. Uh, it didn't make much impact, but um, later um, in his journey, he was attending a, a mission uh, where there was a, a call uh, for, you know, a young man to basically become a missionary. And he ended up um, going to work in a factory because the girl that he was fond of um, um, said, no, you've got to get a proper job. So he went into a, into a factory. But this um, evangelist at this crusade said, look, you can be a missionary in your home area. So he went into this factory and lo and behold, the girl who had invited him to this meeting, who would eventually become his wife, was there at the same factory as a missionary. Wow. If I'm right, and her name was Connie. Connie her Con name, Con that's right. Uh, and uh, it's an, a wonderful. He was story. married for 59 years yeah. to Corrie. Di yeah. She died in January 2018. Well. Some of you will know instantly what we're talking about and who we're talking yeah. about and what he's That's done. That's a better cover of the book than my one, which had yeah. some the wrong colours in it. But uh, <laughs> others of you maybe are not so familiar with him. So mm. to, to give you a little taster of mm. who Brother Andrew was and is, then have a listen to this. <laughs> Now, have you? You can't smuggle anymore. That's what you think. Oh, <laughs> I jumped to a conclusion. <laughs> yeah. Well, now the first trip across, you just pulled up to the border. Is that when you prayed and said, "God, uh, let the seeing not see" at that time, or was that? That's a different what time? we call my smuggler's prayer when I say, "Lord Jesus, when you were on earth, you've made so many blind eyes to see. Now it's the same job." for you to make seeing eyes blind, but you've got to do it now. And if he doesn't, then I've had it. I cannot outsmart the custom guards. Just think, when I pull my car in there and I get out to show my papers, I've had situations where they took four hours to search. Two fellows in the front of my vehicle, two in the rear, two underneath, and two standing there to watch the expression on my face to see if I was getting nervous. <laughs> what can you do? And all the time they couldn't find the Bible? Well, I've never lost one Bible in 20 years that I've done. Praise <laughs> God. Oh, that's <laughs> so spoke to me again through his word. Awake, strengthen what remains, which is at the point of death. Then I understood I have to go to the Christians. I had no idea how to get there. Well, in that one city, okay. But after that, I had no money, no contact, no language. But something was a warning in my heart. And I said, Lord, yes, but how? I think we in the West, now this is a personal confession, I think we are cowards. We ought to become people of guts and courage and strong convictions and don't count our lives dear unto ourselves. did it in obedience to God's permission. It was so big and bold that endeavor. We did it in one night. Time Magazine here says it was the boldest expedition that they have ever uh, witnessed in missions. And I'm glad we were part of it. We did it, but we did it in Jesus' name.
Well, if you've just tuned in, that was a tribute to Brother Andrew, God's smuggler of fame, the man who founded Open Doors, uh, who died yesterday, aged 94. Remarkable man. So many, you look at a film like that, I, I wonder if viewers recognised um, a very young looking... Um, Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson, that's oh, yeah. right, talking yeah. there with a very young uh, brother, Andrew. And uh, I liked that quote, and I wrote it down, where he said um, that so many of us are cowards, mm. whereas what the Lord's looking for is people of guts. Mm. I mean, that's yeah. just putting boldly what the scriptures yeah. say about yeah, us. Yeah, totally, it? totally. So I sort of was telling that story of how he came to the Lord because it was one Bible you know, that he just read relentlessly, so much so he was spending so much time, they thought it was some post-traumatic stress from the wartime and, you know, and he was becoming an introvert. But that shows the power of God's word because he then had the vision to take the Bibles across the whole, the whole world. And um, yeah, I was with um, uh, Simon a couple of days ago on our mornings. We played a clip on why is the church silent in America? And it is, it's a serious problem that we've got. We, we are too quiet. We're not showing enough guts. And in fact, it's, it's sort of folks who, who aren't believers who seem to be more outspoken on moral issues than, than the evangelical church. So it's a really important challenge for us today. I think for Rev TV, I think we, we've got it. Uh, you know, I think well, we do sort of stick our necks out quite a bit, but uh, it is a general problem in the church today. We still have a long way to go, all yeah. of us. But and Could I remind folk of, of Doug Harris? Because Doug also smuggled Bibles uh, into the communist world and had also some r amazing miracles. There's someone I still have contact with today who who God led a Doug Harris to purely. Doug Harris being the, the, the yeah. man who was... A, who, our, our presenter for many presenter. years on yeah. Rev TV and went home to be with the Lord a few years ago. But he, the Lord um, got him in touch with uh, Christians in Prague by literally praying and putting his finger into a telephone directory. <laughs> And God connected, connected him to a Christian family. But, but I think, I don't know if his wife Nomi is watching tonight, but I think yeah. it was through that yeah. and his going to Prague that, that he met his wife Correct. and they got married and yes. lived for What a wonderful many, story. Many it, it puts tingles up my neck because I, I've often been over there and, yeah. and I've met um, Noemi's parents, the Chaskovskis. But what a man of faith. Yeah going back to Brother Andrew yes. was. You know, no, but that, that idea of, of smuggling Bibles, mm. and, and he got to the point, I mean, he says for, uh, to Pat Robertson, I never lost a single Bible. They Amazing. were never, ever taken. And, and there's one famous story, which we might see a little later, where he was in a queue at one of the checkpoints, and the cars in front were being pulled to pieces. Uh, it was taking me, the authorities ages to, to go through them and check them. He thought, what am I going to do? My car's packed with Bibles. And he said, well, the Lord prayed in the Bible. And uh, we read in the Bible. And it, he said, you know, blind eyes to see. He says, I'm going to put the Bibles on display in the car. And then I'm going to pray, Lord, make seeing eyes blind. Yeah. And that's amazing. And, yeah, when it got to his turn to be at the front, the, uh, the authorities, the guards who were on the gate, opened the barrier and just waved him through. And he said he kept looking in his mirror, expecting some shots or some shouts to stop, stop, and didn't happen. He went through. And the car immediately behind him was stopped and searched. Mm. So I, I think folks forget actually how terrible it was under communism. It was an yeah. atheistic you know, wicked, you know, ideology, which 
um, had to destroy the Bible because it basically undermined their whole, you know, uh, power system. But I've often passed through, e even today, you can go and see some of these border posts and the one between East and West Germany, the, the surveillance is phenomenal. And even, you know, ladders going up onto the roofs to have a look down and, you know, it was unbelievable, um, crazy surveillance. So the bravery to go right, because he would have been put into the gulag if, if he was caught. Mm. It's, a, it's a serious business to defy these communist regimes. So a really brave Christian brother, hero, pioneer. Absolutely. Who we, who we need to emulate. Yeah. Well, some of you may have read his story. If so, we'd love to hear from you. Write in and tell us about it. Let's just see what we've got. Uh, John wants to tell us that, in fact, you were talking about him being shot. Yeah. He was shot in the ankle. Okay. He said, good job, he was not called Achilles. Yeah, okay. Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. And uh, uh, Ma Ma um, this is Megay Austin. Uh, we're of your generation, that's good. And you read the book. The main book that was instrumental to our salvation was Tortured for Christ. That's another one that's by right. Richard Worm. Exactly. Wonderful. I remember Richard yeah. Wormbrandt. Lorna and I were at Bible College in, in Birmingham and he came to Birmingham Town Hall. And, and he stood on the, uh, the, the big platform at the front and he unbuttoned his shirt mm. and uh, took part of it off to show his body. Mm. And, and the, the marks were the, the beatings that he'd, he'd suffered. Mm. Um, I remember a story of a KGB going into a church in Russia and, and saying, there's a couple of KGB officers, and, and saying, you know, everyone who's, who is... Um, not a Christian, um, leave now. In other words, we want all, uh, only Christians. And, and they shut the doors and then, they, and then they confessed that they were Christians. So those that had actually stayed and they'd risked being rounded up yeah. actu actually uh, experienced this wonderful turnaround where, and that, that's how it was, the fear, the fear of being caught. I, I remember reading a book on Vanya who you know, was a Russian soldier, a young boy of mm -hmm. 18, who was tortured and to death just for standing up for Christ. That, that's what it took in those days. Wow. Uh, that, that, that last email I just read wasn't from Mega Austin. That's just what the email address is called. It's from Richard and Maggie. My apologies mm. to you both. And you say you both love Revelation TV. But they say, after our conversion, we got married, went on honeymoon to Truro because Richard and Sabina Wurmbrandt were speaking at a church fair and they signed the books that we bought. Wow. That's great. Okay. Um, good evening, uh, Gordon and Tim, says Sonia. I've kept the book, I have the book Kept for the Masters, mm. used by Francis Ridley Havergal. And I have some of Corrie ten Boom, Boom's, Boom's books inherited from my late mother. Francis Ridley Havergal, of course, wrote wonderful hymns, mm. didn't she? Take My Life mm. and Let It Be and many well, You're hymns. the expert because you've done but programs I, on hymns. But I don't know <laughs> Kept for the Masters, the book. Do no. you know that no, one? No, I don't know that. No? Well, good one to know of and to, to look out for. Thank you so much. And um, Hillary says, ah, the book that, gave, that was given to me at the start of my Christian walk was Appointed in Jerusalem oh, by yes. Derek Prince. Yeah, appointment. Appointment, yeah. yes. Uh, Lyd what... And it was um, about Lydia Prince, his first wife. Uh, amazing right. story. Tells the true story of Lydia, a lady who searched for God and Jesus showed up. She fulfilled her destiny in Jerusalem. This book really impacted my life and it's now been updated in a book which showed her family and gives more information about regarding what happened at a later date in her life. By the way, I was going to mention Derek in, in the context of Brother Andrew because it's a rare thing to for someone to be serving the Lord right to the end, which is what Brother Andrew did. I yes. mean, I don't know, he was in his 90s. 94. He, 94, so it was 1928. And um, Derek Prince is another one. Right up to the end, he was ministering the gospel. David Pawson, right up to the end. Yeah. And it's rare, uh, and it, it should be absolutely honored. You've got a long way to go yet, Tim. Uh, not, not, not as far, but um, I think the Lord's definitely going to return. Well, let, let me I, ask you a I question. Get, yeah, and let I me throw another question to, to you at home as well. I want to keep you on your toes this time of night. <sighs> what would you write on your tombstone? <clears throat> That's a, a question. How about, you can have a moment to have a think of it. I've got an answer. You've got an answer. Okay. wonder what you would say at home. Well, on one occasion, 
Brother Andrew was asked that very question. Mm. What would you like to see on your tombstone? Have a listen. Now that I have come of age, more and more people ask, Andrew, what do you want written on your tombstone? I have options. One of them it sounds very pious. He's not here, he's risen. Or another option is, he did what he couldn't. Or, like Oswald Chambers' gravestone, I visited that graveyard in Zaytun in Egypt. Oswald Chambers, a disciple of Jesus Christ. That gives glory to God, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Is there any further explanation needed? Is it a greater honor than to be called a disciple of Jesus Christ? That's a good option. But even then, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, the truth still stands, he did what he couldn't. You get a sense of, of the man when you listen to that, don't you? Yes, totally. He, he doesn't want to boast about his um, achievements in terms of the Bibles, in terms of the million Bibles that he got into China, in terms of Open Doors, which today is working in 70 countries around the world. Um, he just wants to be known a disciple of mm. Jesus Christ. Mm. Not just, just is the wrong word, isn't yeah. it? Because and it's then he this. paused. Yeah. That was good. That was really powerful. So what would you put on yours, Tim? Well, you're making me think of humorous things, so I, 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 um, I'll tell you a few pop options, okay? Um, I'll misquote Mark Twain and say, um, rumours of my death weren't premature, because <laughs> <laughs> um, he said, are premature um, in his lifetime. And of course, Spike Milligan said, I told you I was ill. <laughs> um, but I think on my dad's grave is alive oh. in Christ, hallelujah. Yeah. And I think I'll, have a, I'll, I'll probably go for that one. Um, or I, the, the thing is, now having listened to <laughs> Brother Andrew, I've got to re, um, rejig because I, I was going to say, you know, I did my bit. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's too much talking about me. <laughs> you know, yeah. someone who's, who's genuine will really only want to give glory to the Lord. Um, that's right, because that's what he said, isn't yeah. it? If that's not about me, it's, yeah. it's about Christ, a yeah. disciple, a servant. Of Jesus Christ. And you want a message. So my dear old dad, it was a, alive in Christ is saying something. It's not, it's not a memory. It's like we're, we are alive in Christ. Mm. We, we are translated into his presence. Well, there you are. You've heard Tim's suggestions for his tombstone. You've heard Brother Andrew's. Gordon, Wonder what we haven't says. heard yours. Come on. Well, I think I would put, it sounds too pious, doesn't it? Um, a sinner saved by grace. Mm. Um, mm. I would put, uh, I was trying to remember. Chief what, of sinners is the other one. Yes, use. That was Paul would say, yeah. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yeah. 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 To take what Paul said. Yeah. A, a sort of a common one in the Victorian times was what a meeting, because we all go out to meet him in the club. So what mm -hmm. a meeting, exclamation mark. That was quite a popular one. Oh, let's read a few more of your emails, can we? And uh, this is from uh, Phyllis and Rod Rodney. And you say, um, Please read this book by Ed Silvoso. And there's a picture of it. You can't actually see it on the screen, but I, I've got it there. Mm. Um, so relevant at present. Women, God's Secret Weapon by Ed Silvo, Silvo's, Silvoso, isn't it? Blessing to all and thank you for your great programs, they say. Let's read another one, shall we? This is from Sandy from Birmingham. Great to see you. I love reading Brother Andrew's book, When I Was a New Christian. I loved it, yeah. It was so thrilling and encouraging. It's yeah. great you talk about him tonight. It brings back lovely memories of my early days of being a Christian. The book that has meant so much to me in all my Christian life is The Fourth Dimension mm. by David Yonggi Chow. Mm. I must have read it about 10 times. That book taught me how to pray that God answers. Love to you all, Sandy, George. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't read it. Well, I've read a number of David Yonggi Chows, yeah. but I, I don't think I've read that one. But, but the thing about Brother Andrew is he kept his prayers simple, but he knew how to pray. Yeah. I mean, to, to have those Bibles, to know that he could be taken and put into prison at any time if he was found, and yet to constantly go backwards and forwards 
was quite an amazing... And to have all these KGB files on him. So it wasn't as though he was an unknown. Yes. You know, he literally, in broad daylight, he, they, they had, I don't know how many files on him that came to light after the fall of communism. Yeah. Um, the, the interesting thing that Open Doors put out today, they say the, the recognition that pleased him most was the copies of KGB reports that he obtained after the fall of the Iron Curtain. There were more than 150 pages about him detailing his work in the Soviet Union in Eastern Europe. And despite this, they were unable to stop the work. Mm. What God has begun, no yeah. man can stop. Yeah. So, you know, there, there are new challenges today, but, you know, we, we need folks with uh, equal bravery and guts, as he said, um, to stand up in these days. That's right. Maggie says, I know Brother Andrew was a real servant of the Lord, and I don't want to take away from him, but I'm sure I've read he was a believer in replacement theology. That is disappointing if it's true. Can you throw yeah. any light on this? Well, he, Yes, that he was. True. That is, is true. So I put up one of his books. There. So another one is Light called House. Light Force. Light now, Force. that was quite controversial. It was later in his life. But it just, it, he, was, he was genuinely trying to reach out to the Islamic world. And the problem is with, with Israel um, is that you cannot reach out to the Islamic world if you say anything positive about Israel. Mm. And that's well known with missions to the Islamic world. And so he, he did his, his best, but I think he probably did. Um, you, you can only be one sided, I'm afraid. So he, he chose that side to reach out to, you know, Hamas. And I think we Arafat. all have blind spots yeah. of some kind in our theology. Yeah. I, I mean, how many denominations are there in our world, mm. tens upon thousands upon mm. thousands, and everyone believes that they, they've got the right theology. Mm. Uh, I remember somebody phoned me up one day in the studio when we were in New Malden, and they really were cross because we'd shown a video, we'd done something on, on Brother Andrew, and they said, how can you when his stance on Israel mm. is, is as it is? And, and I just couldn't convince him that God was still using him even though, yeah. in, in my view, yeah. he, he got his theology wrong as far as Israel was concerned. That's it, that's it, exactly. So we can still honour him, uh, but what we should never do, and that's, that's actually helpful to have an email like that, you should never worship even a great Christian leader. The Lord says, you know, I will not give my glory to another. So however great a servant of God is, they're a servant of God. Yeah. And it's, I don't think Brother Andrew would want people to be venerating him. It's just a consequence of his magnificent life, as it were, that we, we look up to him. But actually, um, he would want us to be speaking about his faith, you know, his simple faith in the Lord and, and those Bibles. And he'd want us to pray for the impact that those Bibles will still be having on lives, and especially in China. I mean, he took a million Bibles. Yeah. I think I'm right, you know, in one shipment, you know, landed on the shore in the middle of the night. It, I think they showed it in that clip. It, it's, though, though God's word never returns to him void. So, yeah. I, I, you know, our prayer has to be that in the Islamic world, the Chinese world, whatever world, that God's word will still be having an impact. Yeah, I, I um, interviewed the man who was responsible for for masterminding those, those Bibles wow. going in, a million Bibles going in. A, a remarkable exercise. And in fact, there's a book uh, that's been written, God's Smuggler to China, that's right, that's which right. is the story of it, written yeah. by Dan Wooding. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he did amazing feats for God, where the rest of us sit at home and we moan and we groan. He, he was out there doing it. And we have to keep doing it because, you know, we, we've supplied, you know, the ministry that I've been involved with, the Christian Education, supplied a lot of material to China. But now it is a capital offence to, to be in possession of foreign religious literature. So all this school material has been pulped. You know, people have been in prison, some up to seven years, people that we know. And that's the reality of what's going on today. That's right. Just thinking about that email, which was talking about um, his, his view on replacement theology. I, I'm having a, a, a correspondence at the moment by, by letter with, with someone who um, can't understand why we gave such honour to the Queen mm. and to her Christian faith. Mm. Um, when, he, according to this person, uh, she allowed or she was present at a service in Westminster Chapel where the Quran was read. Mm. I think it was a Commonwealth right. service. And uh, 
Well, she doesn't have choice over that, you see, because those decisions are made for her by her officials, by the government. She, you know, she, she's a constitutional monarch who basically has to do what she's told. That's why it was wonderful that she was still able to live out her faith. That's right. Mm. And there are all, all in, in all our lives, there are things which we can look back on and we think, oh, you know, wish it hadn't happened That's or right. wish we hadn't done. But at the end of the day, her faith was radiant. Mm. We, we saw that. She constantly talked about her faith. She, she saw the importance of gathering with God's people by going to, to church. And um, she led us as a nation in a remarkable way. And by the way, on replacement theology, it is the predominant view within the church it has been through history so it's not unusual I, I mean even in America you know even though we, we say the Christian right and many of the evangelicals are very supportive of Israel there's still quite quite a lot you know there's quite a strong um, of, and if he was you know if that was his audience in his early Christian life or his early speaking to us you can imagine how you stay within that community and then um, and I personally believe the Lord's sovereign over all of that because it enabled Brother Andrew to have a calling to, and you know, undoubtedly he, he gave Bibles to folks out in the Islamic world um, that he wouldn't have otherwise had access to. So I'm not, he's in God's presence now. Who, who am I? You know, it's God who justifies, who, who will condemn? Yeah. Who is it that condemns? And God will say to him, well done, good and faithful yeah, servant. I believe that. Well, if you've just tuned in, we're talking about Prefer Andrew, who went to glory yesterday, aged 94. We do want to talk about some other things tonight, but let me just share with you one more uh, video, which just talks about his life um, and achievements. So here we are, Brother Andrew. I was in the Bible school, the missionary training college in Glasgow. Uh, it was beginning of uh, 55. How I got through that, I don't know. Uh, my English was still very limited, but somehow the Lord helped me. And I was often at the point of giving up. But I think I decided whatever happens, my life is not my own. I have to stick to my decision. I will follow Jesus. In the basement, I picked up a magazine, uh, beautiful pictures and very exciting stories about big festivals of young people and the biggest youth organization in the world. Now, they didn't use the word communism, it was socialism. But they had a big festival coming up. The next one was going to be in Poland. And I wrote to them, I said, I'm a Christian and I'm interested in your big festival. I would like to come and see you. Uh, within a week, I had the answer, you're welcome. I said, but if I come as a Christian, I will act as a Christian. You can do what you want to. So I took off in July, 55, by train from Holland to Warsaw. At the end of that conference, there was a huge parade. And I stood there and God spoke to me from a verse which I found, of course, later in Revelation 3, verse 2. Strengthen what remains, which is at the point of death. There are Christians in this country, in the other countries. You must go and strengthen them, otherwise they will die. And that began a totally new life for me. And it was also the seed, the seed of a new ministry. It's called now Open Doors. And out of that visit came uh, a vision. We must smuggle Bibles to the Soviet Union. That was born actually in Poland, in Warsaw, in July 1955.
Whatever work you're going to do later, it begins with concern. These are people that are part of the body of Christ. If you want an easy Christian life, I advise you not to get involved in the suffering church. Uh, not that you lose the fun, but there is a price to be paid. Unless you take up your cross, deny yourself and follow me, Jesus says, you cannot be my disciple. Nothing ever starts suddenly. It's always one thing leading up to another, as long as you keep saying yes to God. What we have is a false peace that God shattered Get us into action. Give up our privileges, but accept our responsibilities. And then life will be a continuation of the God smuggler story. And uh, maybe one day you'll write your own story. Brother Andrew, who died yesterday, promoted to glory, a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I loved that verse that he quoted from Revelation to the church at, say, at Sardis, where it says, the Lord says, I know your works, that you have a name, that you're alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain, that are, are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. He was a man who believed God at his word and practiced what the Bible said. And look at the change that he brought in our world. Amazing. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, none of us are perfect, so there's an imperfection. Yeah. It, um, perfection will come. You know, we see through a glass dimly, but then we'll, you know, see um, face to face. And I think that um, uh, that's no excuse just because of our failings to say, oh no, we're, we're not good enough. It's, it's like called Gideon syndrome or Moses syndrome. You, um, if God calls you to do something, you've got to get on with it. Amen. Well, thank you for emails and texts that are coming in. Uh, lots of them are coming in. Let me just see if I can, um, I'll start right there, right. L uh, Les, hi, Gordon and Tim, I've just thought about Richard Wurmbrandt, who was a Romanian evangelical Lutheran priest and professor of Jewish descent. Three years in a solitary confinement in a cell 12 feet underground, no light or windows. Body bore the physical scars. Released after eight and a half years in 1956. Warned not to preach, but continued his work in the underground church. Rested again, sentenced to 25 years and a recipient of amnesty in 64, and a mm. man of the same age and, and time that we're talking about mm. uh, with Brother Andrew. Um, hi both, you talk about replacement theology. What is actually taught or not taught with replacement theology? Perhaps you could do a program on it, lining the wrong of it, Dave. That's a good suggestion. Mm. And maybe if we do another late show, we could talk about that. Mm. And Eddie, you write to say, hi, Gordon and Tim, speaking with those who stand outside the Christian faith, I'm very confident when I say most secularists would say Mother Teresa was the most admired Christian of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And I think many believers would also agree with you, Eddie. So thanks for, for that suggestion. Um, uh, Richard and Maureen say, we heard Brother Andrew at BBI. Okay, good. Lorna was saying she heard him as at Birmingham Bible Institute as well. Also heard Richard and Sabina Wernbrandt at the Tent Mission in Glasgow and talked to them in the EC Mission minibus as we drove across Glasgow. Um, oh, a book I love, says Christine, is Reese Howell Intercessor. 
That's another. Classic. So many great books, aren't there? Uh, what a man. Reese gave his all for the mission, even to giving his son to be raised by other family members so he could do missionary work in Africa after hearing a word from the Lord. Blessings to you all. Dawn says, Brother Andrew was a great witness. Heard a Christian woman friend testify about when some years back she smuggled some Bibles into Morocco with a group of others in their backpacks. They were not seen by the guards when searched, just like Brother Andrew. And uh, we were talking about tombstones. And Anita, you've written to say hi, Gordon and Tim. Great to see you both. So many wonderful men of God and women too have gone home to be with our Saviour recently. What an amazing man Brother Andrew was. On my tombstone, Jesus paid it all, so I am saved. Blessings mm. and love, Anita. Mm. Okay, I'm sure I've missed a few emails, but that's just a, a taster of some of the ones that have come in. And I'm sure we'll give more and say mm. more about him in the days and weeks ahead. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, now we want to change something else. We want to talk about your neighbour. Ah. Your neighbour yes. is a gentleman called mm. Richard Scott. Dr. Dr. Richard Scott. Richard yeah, he Scott. hasn't been removed as a doctor yet. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the, the, the background to what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so we, we've sort of um, travelled through this story with Richard for many years. We've been neighbours for 24 four years. We moved into uh, 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 next door to each other at the, uh, within a month of, of each other. You know, we turned mm. up together and... Um, but he, he's gone on um, to be a, a, a prolific witness um, for uh, the freedom to uh, share your faith, um, not only in the medical profession, but for really uh, Christian professionals across the country. And it, and it came to a head um, earlier this week where uh, he was um, up in front of a tribunal. And this is after having already been through uh, investigations by the General Medical Council um, uh, where he, he, um, he won a case but then he subsequently uh, did a radio interview which the National Secular Society um, decided to report to the National Health Service so they carried a further investigation into Richard purely because he offered to pray with his patients if if he felt, you know, there was grounds for it, if they, if they had some, you know, ailments, which, you know, uh, the, the, the medicine that he would normally provide um, isn't, isn't sufficient, and, and he would offer that. And I remember him saying to me many years ago that the World Health Organization says that doctors should care for the your physical, mental, and spiritual needs mm. of patients. So you know, the point he's made uh, repeatedly is that, you know, they offer yoga, they offer acupuncture doctors, they're allowed to offer other so-called spiritual remedies, but they seemed intent on stamping out any Christian witness. And, and he stood against that. So this week, um, the NHS settled with him and they, they settled on on an important point because number one, they wanted to stop him praying with patients. They've conceded he can continue, not only him, but others. That's, a, tr that's a tremendous a massive breakthrough, isn't it? Massive victory. Yeah. So much prayer support. Uh, by the way, a, a persistent, relentless support from Christian concern mm -hmm. over many years. And so, uh, you know, to get to this point where the NHS then approach him just before the tribunal and says, look, we can settle. Um, and they stepped back from requiring him to attend effectively a training course for doctors who commit sexual misdemeanors with patients. They wanted to put him through that and say that, you know, you know praying is, is like crossing yeah. a boundary sexually with patients. And he refused to, he, on principle, and so they stepped right back uh, uh, from this. And, and of course, it was a, a, a mendacious, um, uh, anonymous uh, reporting of him by the National Secular Society, who had become not just some prosaic sort of philosophical society, but a militant, vicious movement that wants to stamp out Christian witness in this Christian country. And, and bear in mind, it's in the wake of our Christian monarch, the Queen, mm -hmm who was so openly Christian. Um, the, 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 it's time for us, to, as Brother Andrew said, look to say, look, enough is enough. 
we've got a duty before God to testify. Well, there's been a cost for him, hasn't there? Because this has been going on for how many years? Well, very, very big cost because he, this is the most amazing part of the story, actually, that when he had this first, you know, the trauma of being threatened to, of being struck off by the General Medical yeah. Council, um, he contracted cancer. And, um, and through prayer, you know, he wrote, he wrote a book, God, I've Got Cancer, and um, he was healed of, of the cancer. And then he, um, he wrote in, in this book about how people of faith can, over, can actually, you know, have uh, amazing uh, healings. So, so faith is actually not just some abstract sort of um, esoteric thought. It, mm -hmm. it actually can physically and mentally help patients. So he was able to testify uh, to that. And there's a couple of wonderful clips um, uh, uh, on the Christian Concern website. Maybe we could play one on our mornings tomorrow. That would be a good idea. Uh, with, with Richard just sharing his testimony. Okay, but for so long, the Christian church seems to have been in retreat and retreat and retreat. Yeah. And, and then to hear something like this, you think it's, it's a gigantic step yeah. forward. And, and a bit like Brother Andrew, in simple faith, he kept going, believing God. Yeah. And, Richard Scott has done exactly yeah, the same. And, and by the way, it, it is relatively easy. I know we're going out onto the airwaves publicly, it, but it's still relatively easy for, for me to sit here with my friend Gordon and talk about Christian things. It's quite another thing to be publicly facing, being right out on the front line, whether it's on the border of the communist world, you know, going out as Brother Andrew, or frankly, an increasingly communist society that seems to be wanting to, you know, regulate how you think and how you believe, and this is not, and this is phobic, and this is hate speech. So it's very brave for someone who's in uh, the public sector like Richard to then stand up for his faith and, and that's hopefully going to give um, uh, courage uh, to many others. You know, plenty of Christians out there, they just need to just be nudged a bit more and, and we can actually turn things around in our country. I believe that and I do believe that, that, that tides uh, go out and they, and they retreat as well. So, you know, and God will be calling us to, uh, you know, were we those that strengthen what remains or were we those who just sort of so. Okay, so we rejoice tonight as a church that uh, Richard Scott has been vindicated in the stand that he took, Dr. Richard Scott yes. in the stand that he took, um, and that the door is open for uh, those in the medical profession to pray. Yeah. And uh, that's a, a wonderful step forward. No longer are we retreating. It's mm. the church which is on the march, church mm. triumphant. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, emails and texts continuing to come in. I, I like this one from, from Dylan. I said right at the beginning, I hope you weren't going to bed yet. And uh, uh, Dylan says, Evening, Godly Gordon and compassionate Tim. I was just about to go to bed, but I stayed up now to watch the show. Mm. And uh, Dylan, you write and say, I read that book, Run, Baby, Run, when I was 12 years old, and I got 98% in my exam, which was based on the book. RE was the only subject I looked forward to at school. Mm. Run, Baby, Run, of course, was uh, uh, the story of Nicky Cruz, wasn't it? Who was one of the first converts of yeah. Dave Wilkinson. Yeah. Can I make a comment about that? Because there yeah. was a time when we grew up where religious education was Christian and you know there was a requirement to have a Christian assembly in schools and you know um, religious councils that what they call the sacra councils the standing committees for local authorities to be advised on religious education was very much towards you know fulfilling the uh, duty to to give a, a Christian framework but now you know these religious councils are filled with people who don't believe not only don't believe in the scriptures but are atheists and apparently atheism is a religion because they're, they're allowed to sit on these religious councils. So we're, our school and education system is in a dire, dire straits. And there are many faithful Christians out there with the uh, TISCA, the, you know, the Christian teachers uh, organization who are, who are faithfully witnessing. But somehow, as it were, then something needs to break, really at government level. And they've got to stop legislating against Christian witness. Well, when you read some of the books that we've uh, been looking at tonight um, and see what God has done through individuals who said, I'm going to step out and I'm going to stand on the word of God, 
God, I believe, is going to raise up yeah. a new generation yeah. of, of people who are saying, I'm going to stand on God's word and step out and we're going to see the most amazing And whatever things. the costs. Yeah. See, that's, that's the thing. That's where it really is. You really aren't serving the Lord you know, and laying down your life if you actually say whatever the cost. Amen. Okay. And uh, Val, you've written, good evening. Open Doors sent my children a copy of God's Smuggler when they found out that as little boys, they had run out into the street shouting with excitement when a Russian believer they had prayed every night for was released. Mm. Wow. That's wonderful. I, I just say as well, I grew up as a little boy with um, Beside my bed, I would have these cards for the refuseniks and for other Christians. And it was an open doors sort of uh, prayer cards. And I'd have an, one each, each night and, and I'd pray for these different ones. And little did I know that within whatever, 10, 15 years, it would all be opened up. But I, for me, that was a powerful witness. And, and I've used it often for those that, who, who, who say that you know, and as I was going through university years when they were supporting the miners' strike, supporting the Green and Common Women and things like this, and the student union wants to give all their funds to these causes, and, and I said, look, we, we've got to stand against, you know, extremism in all its forms. And, and I was able to share my testimony of, of actually what, what communism, what godlessness does and, and the oppression. It, it was incredibly brave what, what um, Brother Andrew did because... Um, Christians were being killed, yeah. they were being tortured and murdered, and he was going in there as a Christian openly. And, and, and Christians still are today. Yes. And, and you talk about a country like uh, uh, North Korea, mm -hmm. and, and I was watching a, a travel program, and um, oh, what's the guy who does travel mm -hmm. programs on TV? I've forgotten his name. Um, Alan Wicker. No, no, it was, <laughs> that's a, that shows your age there. That was a long time ago. Uh, never mind. Mm. But, but, but he was talking about how um, it, his luggage was checked to see if he was taking Bibles in. Oh, wow. In, in yeah, any oh, really? Way. Even today, and yeah. He was allowed to take one, which was his own Bible to read, but he, he had to have it uh, when he came out. The other country. place, Gordon, is Iran. I don't know whether we have time to talk about it. but We, that's, uh, we, we haven't. Don't. We've got about two minutes left on the but program. There is terrible persecution by yeah. these mullahs. Well, we, we, we hoped as a follow-up to what Simon and Reagan were, going to, were talking about tonight, we could have talked about Iran and particularly the growth of a Christian church there, which is very exciting to see. But maybe we'll hold that over and do it in, in another uh, program. Um, Les says, I try to find Christians that work within the medical profession in the past, but seems to be something not easy to do. I would say that people should be able to have a choice if they prefer their doctor to be a Christian. I, I would think that there's many uh, believers who are in the medical profession. Very much. But maybe uh, they've felt that it's not something that they should be talking about in a specific way. Mm. But it's what you're called to do, what Brother Andrew is called to do, what we're called to do, what Richard Scott is called to do. We've just got to be faithful. Yeah. I mean, it's just say, worth saying, you, you've just said it, um, Christian Concern are, are doing an amazing job yes. in terms of helping people like Richard Scott mm. uh, with all the legals and all the, the things that need to be done in order mm. to uh, achieve the result that they have done. So amen to them. Yeah. Uh, good work that they're doing. Well, we're in for time for us to go. I think yeah. we've got about 30 seconds left on the programme. Any final thoughts? Any final uh, yeah, phrase? In I, I actually, I don't really. I, in fact, I had a blank mind before we started, Gordon. So okay. praise well, the Lord. I, I, All the glory goes to him. <laughs> Amen. Well, we want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for your emails. If we haven't read them out, my apologies uh, to you. But it's been great to be able to share and to talk. Um, people in the past, but also people of the future. Let's wait and see what God's going to do. Thanks for being with us. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs>